The one downside... Oh, fuck. I forgot to plug in the mic. Hang on. What the fuck? So anyways, the one downside... What is all this dog hair? Can I just film a video, please? But the one downside to filming with my phone versus my actual camera is I am forever... Like, you know all that stuff that's going on... Like on TikTok right now about like, you're just holding the camera too close to your face and you're not actually ugly and then they use like that zoom out effect thing. I mean, that's real. It does. There goes my webcam. It does distort your face. So like when I'm doing my makeup videos, I'm forever up here and then I'm just fucking egghead Jones over here. But like back here, it's fine, right? My shirt. That's everything. Okay, video time. Here is me doing a video because that's what I do. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time. Why am I just assuming that like people are just flocking back here because this is God tier content. So how are you? How's your day? Yeah, cool, me too. So anyways, today, I am so excited about today's video. This is something I've wanted to do for so long, but um, something like this, as you can tell by the title, you already know what we're doing today. Videos like this do take a lot of organizational skills and just an eye for things, like uh, putting pieces together. It takes a fucking brain, which I have none of the above, so I, I've been putting it off, but I would like to turn this into a series, so if you're interested in that, please give me feedback on this video. I mean, don't, like, tell me it suck because then I'll cry for, like, three days, but well, I mean, I guess you can. This is America. You're free to say what you want. Or maybe you're not in America. Look at me just assuming. But yeah, leave a comment, leave a like, leave a dislike, leave your grandmother's middle name. I don't give a shit. This is gonna be a really long intro. I mean, it's already kind of been a long intro. So if long intros annoy you, then I mean, click off because that's like 90% of this channel. Also unrelated, I got this creeper plush from Target and I've been finding the best Minecraft stuff at Target. I am so obsessed with Minecraft. I have been since it, like 2010. That's never gonna change. Minecraft. To, I guess, get started on the actual video. What do I even say? So like, okay. So today's video is going to be a closet cosplay. And again, I'd like to turn this into a closet cosplay series. So I want to do these videos, first of all, to kind of help people like me that um, maybe you've always been interested in doing cosplays and you're worried that you're going to um, do something wrong. You're worried that you're not going to be able to pull off the character well. Maybe you're in a certain financial situation where you can't afford to make your own cosplays or buy your own cosplays. Maybe you're not skilled enough to make a cosplay. There's so many factors that can go into prohibiting someone from cosplaying. And the thing about cosplay is, of course, you're going to have your gatekeepers as you do with any community, but it's pretty versatile. It's a lot more versatile than what most people would expect. As long as, you know, you're having fun with it, that's really all that matters if I'm being upfront. So it doesn't always have to be spot on. You don't have to be perfect with the character. Every single detail. Of course, you have those cosplayers that do do that sort of thing and it does work out really nice. But some people, I like to follow all variations of cosplayers because I like to see how people put their own personal spin on these characters. I like to see the way they interpret the character and what the character means to them and maybe there are certain things that they see with the character that other people don't see and that's honestly the best part about cosplay is just there's so many different representations. It doesn't all have to be cookie cutter. We're all wearing the same Hatsune Miku outfit from Amazon. You know like have fun with it man. Like think outside the box a little bit and that's a cool thing about doing something like a closet cosplay. Huh? <laughs> like a closet cosplay or like a casual cosplay. So um, these are two terms that I'm sure you've heard before. If you're not already aware of them and you're a newcomer, I can go ahead and try to explain that in my own personal... I don't know. So this might not be right and don't listen to anything I have to say ever because I'm just a dumb bitch and I know absolutely nothing. But to me, these terms are... I think to most people, they're sort of interchangeable. You know, they're 
you're just splitting hairs between the two. But to me, when I think of a casual cosplay, I'm thinking of a more low-key inspired outfit. So, like, I take a certain character and I'm like, okay, they have this color scheme. Um, they wear a skirt that kind of looks like this, you know. I don't have a skirt like that, but I have one like this and it's a similar style, so I'll wear that. Or, you know, I'll just, I'm going to do a, um, Hello Kitty, uh, casual cosplay and I'm going to wear these blue overalls and a yellow t-shirt and, you know, just wear like a white wig. You know what I mean? Like a casual cosplay is going to be like, okay, you can go to the mall, you can go to work, you can go to dinner with your youth pastor and then like give a blowjob behind a Taco Bell afterwards. Like, it's not that serious, right? Now, when I think of, like, a closet cosplay, to me, that's going to be, obviously, from the name, you're utilizing things that you already have in your wardrobe and on hand to create the character. But I feel like with a closet cosplay, you can kind of get a little bit more creative and you're getting along the lines of a lot more costumey than what you would with just a casual cosplay, hence the term casual. Um, again, you can pretty much use those terms interchangeably. Um, it's all up to you and your interpretation and what you want to do with it. Um, but that's the way I see it. So casual cosplay, just doing a character inspired outfit versus closet cosplay. Um, I want to fully cosplay this character, but I'm poor. <laughs> so today we are going to be doing, that's the longest intro. I am so sorry, but hopefully where this is the first video in this series, I won't have to go over that ever again. Um, so look at these eye bags. Good thing eye bags are like a trend right now. Like I'm very trendy. We are going to be doing Madoka Kaname from my absolute number one top, no questions asked, no competition, my absolute favorite fucking anime of all time as Puella Magi Madoka Magica. I just say Madoka Magica. If you're saying all that every single time you talk about this anime, fuck off, that's too many words. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite. It's just, it's, it, beautiful. Madoka would be a fun one and there's, I, I didn't know if I wanted to go with like just her school uniform look or if I wanted to do like a uh, version of her in her full magical girl gear, which I kind of want to do one of those later on because I have some things I feel like could work. Um, but for now, we're going to do Madoka in her school uniform because I dug out the perfect outfit and I think it works so well. Like, same vibes, right? Um, so I'm going to do my makeup. We're going to do a makeup look. This is going to be a really long video. Buckle up, folks. And then um, I styled a wig and we're just, we're going to do the whole nine and do like full Madoka cosplay, you know? Closet cosplays. I don't know if this is something you'd, you'd be comfortable like going to a con in. I feel like it's definitely an option because if you utilize your belongings enough, you can really pull it off and come out with some fairly accurate cosplays just depending on what you have. Me, I have so much shit because I'm addicted to shopping. So I I have several <laughs> people's wardrobes. So this is perfect excuse for me to do something. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first I wanted to show you guys the wig because this is like my biggest flex right now. So this is a wig I already had and I restyled it to be sort of a Madoka style. It's on the mannequin crooked, so like ignore that. So it looks lopsided, but it's not. Um, instead of doing a full pigtail, I did like a half up pigtail and where the wigs cut kind of short, it still gives like that full little short cutesy pigtail illusion. The color is decent for this, honestly. Um, this is kind of like a, uh, more muted, ashy shade of pink. It's a little bit darker than how it's looking on camera right now, but that's fine. Um, I should probably turn on that light. The back of it, this is where all my hard work came in. So if you notice, there are no tracks showing. There is no cap showing. This took so long. And if you are interested on how to style literally the derp cheapest wigs that you can possibly find on the internet, I am so down for that because, again, my biggest flex. I'll show you what the inside looks like. This is not a good wig. Like, this is that kind of, like, super cheap, like, this kind of cap. I fucking hate that shit. You can see this is not a well-constructed wig at all. And so, in order... Great! 
in order to style this, this really took some elbow grease. But basically, there, there's no big secret to it. All you have to do is really tease the shit out of it and use a lot of hairspray and strategically place your hairs. Yeah, so very proud of my Madoka wig there. It's a good thing I'm inhumanly short or else this Walmart tripod probably would not be cutting it anymore. Okay, so first let's get the outfit together. So I had a couple things that I thought could have worked. So I actually, for once in my life, I had too many options of what I could use. I always look down here because I think the camera's down here, but you're actually right there. My bad. So this First of all, this top I'd like to use for a um, closet cosplay of her magical girl uniform, but also if you look here on the screen, her school uniform, uh, it has the puffy sleeves to the top of it, so that's why I thought, obviously, puffy sleeve. Um, I don't know, just the overall style of it, same kind of vibe, but this could also work really well for her magical girl costume. As for the skirt, looking at pictures of the skirt, that's what throws me off because to me, the skirt always looked kind of like a greenish tinge. But when you see different cosplays of the school uniform that they wear, sometimes, you know, the skirt included looks more navy or it looks more gray. So I never really got a clear answer on what color the skirt is. But to me, it always looked kind of greenish. So that's kind of what I'm going to go with. Um, something else I considered is just using this just because it's a regular plaid skirt and just playing off of her pink coloration, like with her hair and her eyes and stuff. I also had this skirt, which in coloration could definitely work. Um, minus like the bows. It's got this frilly bit down here, but that's something I did think about using. So what I landed on after all that is I already tried on this outfit last night so I could see if it would work or not. But um, I have this skirt here. It's a trip skirt um, that I got when I worked at Hot Topic. It's too big, so I don't wear it a lot, but, um, I thought this would be perfect, especially since in my mind the skirt's green, but the, uh, the plaid pattern on this, where it's a lot more, it's a lot bigger, more spread out, not as, like, tight little pleats like those other skirts are, so I feel like that really works with the character design, and then I found this top. Now I'm gonna play with it, we're gonna do some other stuff to it, but I got this at Target, and I love it, and I was very excited to wear it, but I feel like the vibe of this top, I don't know, once it's all thrown together, it's very similar. So it doesn't necessarily have the puffy sleeves, but it's a lot more elegant of a top. A lot less casual, you know, and so just the design around the color here, it does give like that puffy frilly sleeve illusion. It, just trust me on it works. So I'm gonna put it on and then I'll show you the outfit in more detail. Okay, before we get started here, three things we are going to ignore. First is my bald head. Second is the pile of clothes on the floor in front of us. Third is my dirty ass carpet. So, here is the outfit I put together. If you can see it, let me try to stand back a little bit, get it on frame. It's not perfect. I'm not using professional equipment by any means, but you get the idea. So we have the skirt here. This top, again, I uh, thought worked very well. Now, I did add on this faux Peter Pan collar. Number one, to give something for this ascot to cling to. Now, I didn't have like a red bow tie, so this is the only thing I had that was red, but still same kind of vibe. I actually have a Madoka Soul Gym here, because, you know, she has to have that or else her body is just a lifeless shell. So here, the logic behind this is, again, if we look at a picture of the uniform she wears, it is, overall, the color scheme is pretty off-putting, so there's a lot of logic that went into this in order to tie all this together because these are a lot of colors that don't go together. Number one, it's hard to make red and green work as a color combination without making it look like Christmas. Number two, mixing cream and white. Now again, if you look at her uniform, if you notice, they're wearing sort of a jacket that's this off-white creamish color and then they appear to have a some sort of white dress shirt underneath. So again, I mimicked that with adding this white faux collar to give that same offset there. And um, again, you need some kind of white up top to be able to bring the white to the bottom and uh, pair it with the, she wears white thigh highs, so I chose that. There's also white in the plaid of the skirt. So again, we're needing 
more white somewhere else in order to tie it in, but also balance it to where the, the cream colored overlay here isn't just seeming like it's out of nowhere. Like it still mixes well together. Madoka wears brown shoes, so I chose brown shoes. I have a pair of black ones that are like that perfect Japanese school loafer style, which also would have worked, but these have black in the soles, but I didn't want to put in too much black because there's no black really anywhere else in the outfit. I guess there's some black in the skirt, but it's not noticeable enough to really pair it with the black shoes. I feel like the brown shoes work perfect with this cream collar and um, the black soles will tie in with the black in the skirt. So those are things you want to think about, not just with cosplay, just fashion in general. Like when you go to pick out outfits. That's why sometimes we put things together and we think it'll be really cute and then it doesn't work. But this overall, um, I'm proud of this. I feel like this works. Uh, same type of vibe as her uniform, I feel like. We have like that really dressy top going on here. Um, we got the skirt and then we managed to be able to mix in the brown shoes and the white socks. So, a lot going on there. Um, again, if I show you the wig again, if you notice, I have pink bows on the head, not just because I didn't have red bows. I mean, that's, it's, it's really just because I didn't have red bows, but, um, if you notice with the school uniform style, there's not a lot you have control of as far as what you're wearing. So if you notice in the anime, the two things that can change is they can change hair accessories and they can change their socks. You can either wear white or black socks from what I gather watching a 12 episode anime. So I feel like Madoka, if you notice in the beginning scene, she's choosing which ribbons to wear in her hair. So obviously that's something she changes often. So even if they don't overall match the outfit, I feel like if Madoka has pink ribbons, she's going to one day wear pink ribbons to school because that's about the only thing of her outfit that she can actually change and have control of. So a little bit of anime logic there for you. Okay, so there's the outfit. I'm very pleased with this. Please don't roast me. I've gained like 10 pounds. Yeah, so let's get started on the makeup. I'm going to get started by putting in contacts. I got some, some pink contacts yesterday from Unique So that will be absolutely perfect for this cosplay. I actually bought them specifically for this cosplay so let's go get those in okay contacts are in let me show you these a little bit more up close i have tunnel vision like a motherfucker but these are so perfect depending on what you look at or what pictures you see or who you ask uh her eyes have a tendency to be sometimes they look pink but sometimes they look red like i don't really know which to really say so these contacts same sort of deal they're pink as hell when you see them in, out of the packaging or like out of my eyeball they're definitely pink, but they're a very, very hot pink. So if I stand back here or if I just wore these to work or something, they would probably think that I have some sort of weird mutation going on because my eyes look red as all hell, but they're just very hot pink. So these are spot on perfect for Madoka. Like, you know what I mean? Perfect color. So I'm very, very pleased with these. So since I pride myself in being a living anime character, I'm going to do my makeup pretty much how I normally would. So I'm not going to do too much narration there. But other than that, I mean, this is going to be pretty quick and quiet because you've seen me do my makeup a million times. There's not going to be much differentiation there. I'm not going to transform my face into a character. I'm not that talented. I'm just going to do what I think looks good. So my first thing is, um, as far as overall color scheme, like with my eyes, I could do one of two things. So I could pull this bad bitch out and I could do like that simple, neutral, um, like Japanese schoolgirl makeup, you know, very muted colors, a lot more natural looking. But when I think of Madoka, I mean, she's just such a little fucking cinnamon bun that I want pink and I want sparkles. So I'm going to mess more with that. So I think for today's palette, uh -huh. I wish I had more stuff. I don't have a lot of things. I want to know how I don't just have like an all pink palette. You would think that would be like the number one thing I have that I use every day. Um, so I think I'm going to use the Jawbreaker palette because I want to use these pinks. I might dip into my little color pops here. Is there some pink going on in there? Maybe Beauty Killer, like specifically for these guys. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And then um, maybe the Conspiracy palette, just specifically for um, the pigment shade. Because I do like that shade a lot. I need to find a dupe. 
I'm sure there's plenty out there. It's not that creative of a collar. Yeah, let's get started for real this time. Remember, the first thing I do is cover up so I don't get any makeup on the clothing. A lot of people would opt to get dressed after they do their makeup, but if there's anything I'm wearing that I have to pull over my head, I don't want to risk getting makeup on it that way, so that's why I get dressed first, if anyone was curious. I went out and ran some errands today, so I already did all my skincare, so I'm just going to go ahead and prime my eyelids first and then we'll get started on shadow so I'm gonna go into China white from the beauty killer palette just to give myself a nice smooth base to start with something to really brighten and enhance the area so Madoka has very much a downturned eye shape so we're gonna play on that quite a bit to get that super sweet and innocent look and so with that I'm gonna start by I'm gonna take Courtney which is like this like orangey tannish shade and I'm going to start by sticking that on the outside here and then just slightly blending it inwards in the place where my crease should be but isn't. Okay getting started with some pink I'm going to go into the mini breaker and I'm going to take I think I'm going to start with bubble gum that super pinky pink shade and again just apply that right there to the outside. We're focusing most of the pigment on the outside area here, which this is nothing new. Like I said, this is mostly how I do my makeup anyways, but for the sake of the video. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go into Foreplay, which is that darker shade of pink in the palette. I'm going to tuck that in right there as well. Just to deepen it a little bit. Okay, um, that's plenty of pink on my eyeballs. That's about what I was going for. I think I'm going to take this shade in my ColourPop palette. I don't remember what it's called, but it's kind of like a darkish matte purpley pink color. I'm going to stick that sucker in there too. Just like right here. I don't even know if this is actually doing anything, but I know it's there. Now I feel like we need a little bit of pizzazz on the lid here. So I'm going to take this like goldish shift thing. You, the ring light ruins everything. You can kind of see it. It's kind of an off-white shade. It has like a goldish hue to it. So I think that'll be really pretty right there. I just have to find a brush that I can apply it with. I'm going to give the brush a spritz of my setting spray so that it really picks up the pigment here. So now I'm going to take a dry brush something a little bit fluffier. Now I'm going to go into that same shade I just used but I'm going to go into it again dry and just kind of blend that in to this part here so the pigment's less concentrated but i still needed to work it upward i just wanted most of the concentration to be on my eyelid itself just so it looks less i don't know chunky i don't i don't know words okay so now i feel like all i need is some sparkle so i'm gonna use this little nyx rollerball shimmer thing that i've had for like four years and can't find anywhere in the world anymore and it's my favorite thing ever so i'm, I'm pretty mad about that blend that out a little bit and tap it out whatever drag it over my little little bit too why not lots of glitter glitter everywhere that's it for eyeshadow for now we're gonna come back to the under eye as we always do for now i'm gonna get started on the liner so looking at her eyes again it's very downturn so i do want to bring my liner down but i'm not gonna bring it underneath my eyeball like most would probably assume I would and normally I would but I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try to just bring it to the corners. We'll try that. I don't know how it's gonna work out. I'm gonna use my two different brushes here to try to help me. Again just using my Maybelline gel eyeliner because it's what I got. So I think I'm gonna start instead of just starting on my lid I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this out a little bit from the corner of my eye because that's the shape I want to create. Make sure it looks completely different on both sides. And I'm trying to bring it out but not like straight out like kind of out in a downward a downward motion there. It's fine for now I'm gonna start drawing a line up here connecting it to that shape we just created and i'm not going to bring it all the way in my eye i'm going to start right here because we want that thicker on the outside again so i'm going to stop right about there in the center of my pupil okay that's the liner super simple just a really really thick line on the outside going downwards so now i'm going to do mascara i'm going to do some lashes i'm going to do my face makeup off camera and then i will be back okay i am back so now it's time to finish off this eye look um went through contoured my nose foundation contoured around my jawline here it's looking a little muddy maybe we'll fix that real quick okay. 
whatever. So I got that done. Um, so now we're going to go back in and finish underneath the eyes. So I'm going to locate the palette I was using, first of all. I'm going to go back into the bubblegum pink shade. I'm just going to take this angled brush I have here and I'm going to place that right underneath here. Then I'm going to stop like right there. To deepen that more, I'm going to go back into foreplay, which is the darker pink in that palette. And it came in a little farther than I wanted to over here, so I'm gonna pull that in a little farther over here, I guess. Let's blend that out a little bit. So now, much like I did earlier, I'm gonna take a brush here, blast it with some setting spray. And then again, going in with that gold shimmery uh, color pop, just gonna plug that in right here. Doing this kind of look under your eye, like the lighter shadow in here and then the darker out here, it does give that super cutesy, sweet puppy eye look, which I feel like is perfect for Madoka. This also uh, highlights the tear bag to really give that puppy eye look without taking the darker shadow underneath. But I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. So I'm going to go into, well, am I? Where'd it go? I, I... I just had it. I just contoured my face. I'm a very confused person. So I'm gonna go into my contour shade here and I'm just gonna take this brush. Instead of dragging it over more like I would normally do, I'm really just gonna stick it towards the front underneath where the white lays to really just further enhance that puppy eye look. I'm gonna blend that out a little bit with a different brush. Want it to be a little bit of a softer line. Cute! Okay, so now I'm gonna take um, the highlighter shade that's in here, take my little brush here, setting spray, and I'm gonna apply that right here in this very inner corner where none of the other product really reached. And then finally, I'm gonna take this glitter roller ball here and I'm gonna find a brush that I can use for this. I'm just gonna take it and just kind of like roll it onto a brush like that so that I can pat it on in here. Some more sparkle sparkle. Well, you can't really see on camera. Trust me, it's sparkly. Have I ever lied to you? Okay, so now the only thing I'm not sure about is we didn't do like any type of bottom lash line, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a black shadow. I think I'm just gonna go into like my, my little uh, rude anime palette here and take kind of a bigger liner brush. I'm just gonna dip into a black shadow just ever so slightly. I'm gonna apply that right in here like directly underneath the center of my eye. Because if I pull it and connect it in here, um, unless I come way down, my eyes are gonna have more of a like almond shape and I want my eyes to be more rounded for Madoka's character. So this way, my eyes still have that downturned uh, puppy shape, but it makes them a little bit more rounded. Now I'm gonna go back into my gel and I'm just gonna draw a couple little, little lashes out here. I feel like people have a tendency to fixate on cosplay makeup a lot like worried about like getting something looking perfect but honestly makeup doesn't fucking matter do your makeup however you want cosplay be creative does anyone else's nose run like so bad whenever you do your makeup what is up with that i'm just gonna take the dreaded white pencil a lot of people will say you really should use like a peach if you want to mimic a more realistic eye white but we're literally doing a character that is fictional and does not exist so I feel like if I use a white pencil, who's really trying to be realistic here? But yeah, I think it looks good. Okay, so mascara and the eyes are completely finished. You can omit the bottom lash mascara if you think it looks better. Um, I just have to do it or else I'd feel incomplete. So, so now I'm going to add some blush. And again, um, Madoka is very cutesy. So... I'm gonna take again my one blush that I own and I'm gonna add that probably up a little higher, like right here underneath my eye. Maybe if you want, you can take it to the nose bridge and do like a little bit of sun stripping. But I'm just gonna stick it right here. I'm just kind of pull that and dust it more outwards. Okay, a lot of blush, very cutesy. I'm gonna blend it out just a tad so it's not quite so extreme. Me, scared of being extreme, wow. All right, I think that's perfect. And then maybe, cause why not? Let's just do a little bit on this underside, the un under the tip of my nose like that. Okay, now that all really that's left is lips and then like maybe a little bit of highlighter. 
So I'm gonna go back into my contour palette here and grab the highlighter and just like throw that right here. Seems as good a place as any to put it. I feel like it's not really necessary. It just, again, I feel like needs done. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I get it. All right. I'll allow it. Okay, for lips, I don't think I'm going to do anything special. I'm going to take my sponge over my lips because it still has product on it. Maybe add just like a little bit more concealer. Oh, look, it's 2003. Sometimes this works. Sometimes it feels weird and I hate it, but I'm going to set this with a little bit of powder foundation. And then we're gonna avoid eating for 10 to 12 business days because once this gets messed up, there's there's no fixing that. I feel like I butchered that entire sentence. It's fine, we're moving on. Um, I'm gonna take, use this one, should I use this one? I'll use this one, we'll, we'll try it. And this little Lancome, I don't remember what these are, what it's called, but it's like this little, it's got this little spongy thing, but they're perfect for like a gradient lip look, if you like to do that. This one is very, very pink. All right, that looks like trash. Now let's add um, this other one. It's kind of like a deeper purpley pink. All right, I think we are through here, folks. I'm gonna get my wig on and take off my robe and we'll take into the bathroom so maybe we can see the final look. Yeah, so I got my little cube that I just took pictures with. So yeah, we have like the exact same eye color going on. Like literally the same. Twinsies. Here is the final look. We're in my ugly ass bathroom. Don't worry about it. We're working on it. But um, this is a much bigger mirror, so you can kind of see a little bit more. I'm, I'm trying. But yeah, I really like how this came out. Like overall, the outfit works. Like this is pretty dang good for just like regular street clothes I had in my closet. Um, again, shirts from Target. This is the brand Trip. I got it at Hot Topic. Socks are from Amazon. Shoes, uh, I don't know, like one of those like TJ Maxx Marshalls ass stores. This came from Amazon a few years ago. This also came from Amazon. The Soul Gym also probably came from Amazon. I am addicted to Amazon. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Red Rum. Um, the makeup, is this lighting better or worse? Let me flip it around. The makeup, I feel like could be better. There is no good lighting. What is up with my contour? There is no good lighting in this bathroom. That's unfortunate. Um, but it works, you know, it's, it's not my favorite look I've ever done, but I wanted a lot of pink, so we got a lot of pink. If there's anything I would absolutely change about this overall look, it's the wig. I'd like to get a much better wig. This one's cut a little lopsided, but for what it is, what I had to work with, I'm pretty damn proud of what I was able to do to this wig. Well, I guess that's really it. Final result. Super cute. Hi, welcome back to the chair where we do all of our intros and outros for some reason. The lighting over here looks much better. I should have just sat here and been like, here's my face, bitch. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for watching this. Again, I'd like to turn to this, I'd like to turn this into a whole thing. So if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, more like the premise, um, hopefully. <laughs> The next one will be a little bit better, uh, but yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this. I like cosplaying. It's not something I do often, um, but I do a lot of like character inspired outfits and looks. So uh, things like casual cosplays and closet cosplays are entirely up my alley. So yeah, just let me know what you would like to see. I'm open to suggestions. S suggestions? I have a lot of trouble talking. I'm open to suggestions and um, yeah. I wish I had a dollar for every time I said and um. Like, use your brain. This is your first time on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can subscribe if you want, but I'm not gonna guilt trip you into it. And for everyone else, I love you. Have fun. Be safe. Look both ways before you cross the street. And I will see you next Monday. Bye!